Dinosaurs ruled the Earth for over 165 million years. There were many theropods throughout the Mesozoic era that were extremely formidable. We've picked 72 that dominate the others. In this show, we will talk about these dangerous animals, including when they lived, what they ate, their weaponry, and how humans would fare if these creatures were still alive. From the Tyrant Lizard King, to the Lord of the Lizard Eaters, to the Meat-Eating Bull, this is 72 Dangerous Animals Prehistory. Let's get something out of the way. I can pronounce dinosaur names however I want. People made fun of me on an older video for saying Brachiosaurus, Dilophosaurus, Spinosaurus, etc. Let me make this very clear. It's Brachiosaurus, not Brachiosaurus. Look into the roots, people. Pronounce Brachy as in Brachydactyly. You also don't call them Brachiopods. You say Brachiopods. It's pronounced Spinosaurus, not Spinosaurus. And it's pronounced Giganotosaurus, not Giganotosaurus. You don't say gigantic, do you? No, you say gigantic. Giganotosaurus. Quetzalcoatlus was named after the feathered serpent god Quetzalcoatl. There's even a bird called a Quetzal, also named after the god. So tell me, why would it be pronounced Quetzalcoatlus? It's not Ankylosaurus, it's Ankylosaurus, and so on. Jurassic Park and Jurassic World have a habit of pronouncing the names wrong. Megalosaurus grew up to 30 feet long and weighed up to 2,000 pounds. It lived 166 million years ago in England. Let's start off our new dinosaur-themed season of 72 by celebrating the first dinosaur to be named. Megalosaurus was originally thought to have been a 66-foot-long quadrupedal lizard. Now we know it was 20 to 30 feet long and bipedal. Megalosaurus had short but muscular arms. It had a large head proportionate to its body size and had long pointed teeth, typical for a carnivorous reptile. While Megalosaurus was named in 1824 based on several fossil remains, the first Megalosaurus bones were actually discovered in 1676. Robert Plott originally described the bones, which was a large portion of a femur, as a Roman war elephant, then later as a biblical giant. In 1763, Richard Brooks captioned the bone Scrotum Humanum in his book, which translates to human ball sack. Imagine you are one of the most formidable groups of animals in history, and you die, only to be remembered by future generations by the name of human ball sack. That's pretty disrespectful to ball sacks, if you ask me. In all seriousness, Megalosaurus got to keep the name Megalosaurus after the realization that it was the same animal as Scrotum, because the name Scrotum hadn't been used in any subsequent literature. William Buckland named the genus Megalosaurus in 1824. However, a species name wasn't provided until 1827 by Gideon Mantell. In 1842, the term dinosaur was coined. Megalosaurus was the default theropod dinosaur. It had the most common body plan of the carnivorous dinosaurs. Its large size would have made it easy to kill people. Megalosaurus slides in the first place for now. Up next, the villain from Avengers Endgame. Thanos grew up to 21 feet long and weighed up to 1,400 pounds. It lived 86 to 83 million years ago in Brazil. Thanos Dinosaur was named in 2020 after the Marvel character Thanos. It was a medium-sized abelosaur. Thanos was not the apex predator of its habitat as there was a larger undescribed Megaraptoran from the same area. Like other abelosaurs, Thanos had forward-facing eyes, giving it binocular vision. This gave it depth perception, allowing it to hunt its prey much easier. Thanos also had a great sense of smell. It could run it up to 30 miles per hour, similar to Carnotaurus. Its bite was strong enough to break bones. Thanos' arms were completely useless, meaning it couldn't wear the Infinity Gauntlet or snap its fingers. Thanos could easily run down a person and gobble them up. 
Thanos takes first place due to its speed. Incoming, a theropod with an unsure taxonomic status. Seats grew up to 39 feet long and weighed up to 8,800 pounds. It lived 96.4 million years ago in North America. Seats, the man-eating monster, was originally thought to be a Megaraptoran, however now it is thought to be a Tyrannosaur or possibly an Allosaur. Megaraptorans, however, are believed to be Tyrannosaurs, so either way, Seats was likely a Tyrannosaur. Seats was the third largest terrestrial carnivore to ever live in North America, after Tyrannosaurus rex and Acrocanthosaurus. Seats had teeth that resembled a crocodile's. It preyed on Eolambia, Tenontosaurus, and the giant sauropod Abytosaurus. It also lived alongside Moros. Seats would have had large claws on its forelimbs that it could use to slash at its prey. Seats could cause devastating damage to a person with its claws. It would be able to kill you quickly and rip you apart to swallow. Seats overpowers Thanos and takes first, pushing Thanos to second and Megalosaurus to third. Here comes the tiny Tyrannosaur. Moros grew up to 10 feet long and weighed up to 172 pounds. It lived 96.4 million years ago in North America. Moros was one of the earliest tyrannosaurs to live in North America. The name Moros means impending doom. This is a reference to the fact that tyrannosaurs would soon dominate North America. Moros was a very fast runner due to its light weight and slender body. Its foot bones resembled ornithomimids in proportion rather than the later tyrannosaurs. It had an extremely good sense of smell and sight. It would have been capable of detecting its prey from a distance then running it down to catch it. Morris was faster than humans. Once it reached you, it would pounce and dig its claws into you and use its teeth to tear at your throat until you were dead. Moros can't compete with our other larger theropods. It takes fourth. Up next, a giant raptor. Dakota raptor grew up to 20 feet long and weighed up to 771 pounds. It lived 66 million years ago in North America. Dakotaraptor was one of the last dromaeosaurs to go extinct. Even though Dakotaraptor was gigantic for a dromaeosaur, it resembled smaller dromaeosaurs in proportions, rather than Utah raptor. Dakotaraptor is confirmed to have had wings with large, prominent flight feathers. Dakotaraptor's legs were longer and more lightly built than Utah raptors. Dakotaraptor was well suited for running down and pursuing prey, and it even can run up to 40 miles per hour. Its sickle claw was nine and a half inches long around the outer curve. Strong muscles provided Dakota Raptor with the strongest slashing strength of any Dromaeosaur. If it was a pack hunter, it would have competed with subadult Tyrannosaurus Rex for prey. Dakota Raptor preyed on Triceratops, Ankylosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus, and Edmontosaurus, as well as smaller dinosaurs such as Ornithomimus. Dakotaraptor takes first, pushing Seats to second, Thanos to third, Megalosaurus to fourth, and Moros to fifth. Incoming, a gigantic sail-backed predator. Spinosaurus grew from 46 to 59 feet long and weighed up to 16,300 pounds. It lived 99 to 93.5 million years ago in North Africa. Spinosaurus is best known for being the largest carnivorous dinosaur and the biggest predator to ever walk the earth. The largest estimates put Spinosaurus at up to 59 feet long. In the movies, Spinosaurus was depicted as a dinosaur killing machine that dominated every other creature it met in its rule in the Cretaceous period from 99 to 93.5 million years ago. However, the true look of Spinosaurus has been debated for over a hundred years since its discovery in 1912. In 1912, Ernst Stromer discovered the remains of a huge dinosaur in the Egyptian desert. He named it Spinosaurus aegypticus, which means Egyptian spine lizard. In World War II, Stromer, who was against the Nazi party, begged the owner of the museum where Spinosaurus was on display to be moved to a cave to be safe from the war. The museum owner, Carl Berlin, who was a Nazi supporter, refused to move the skeleton to safety because Stromer was against the Nazis. In 1944, an Allied plane dropped a bomb onto the museum and destroyed everything inside, including the Spinosaurus skeleton. The only things left to prove Spinosaurus existed were Stromer's sketches and photographs. Stromer died in 1952, 
heartbroken because two of his sons were killed in the war and the third was captured by the Soviets and could not return until after the war. His son, who survived, donated Stromer's notes and sketches to the museum after it was renovated. In 2014, Nizar Ibrahim discovered parts of a new skeleton of Spinosaurus. This skeleton revealed that its long bones were solid instead of hollow like other theropod dinosaurs. These solid bones were used for balance in the water. With the new skeleton, it was also revealed that Spinosaurus's leg bones were much smaller than previously imagined. Its hind legs were found to be roughly the same size as its arms. Because of this, Ibrahim proposed that Spinosaurus walked in all fours when exited the water. Spinosaurus, like all dinosaurs, laid eggs. This is when Spinosaurus would come ashore. No one knows the true purpose of Spinosaurus's sail, but scientists made many guesses. Ibrahim suggested that the sail was used as extra weight to keep it submerged for longer periods. Some scientists believe that the sail could have been used for attracting mates, as modern birds do with their bright colors and other adaptations. Other scientists propose that the sail was used for storing energy or cooling itself off when overheated. The sail also could have been used to make itself appear bigger, like a scared cat if it turned sideways. Another hypothesis is that Spinosaurus would have used its tail like a thresher sharks to slap the water and stun fish. The sail would prevent Spinosaurus from spinning around uncontrollably when swinging its tail to the side. The neck and tail vertebrae were flexible enough to allow for a swinging motion of the tail. Its sail would have acted like a sailfish's to herd fish together. It is also hypothesized that Spinosaurus hunted in packs to herd and catch fish, like modern sailfish. When a CT scan was done on the skull of a Spinosaurus, new details emerged on its lifestyle. The scan revealed small holes at the end of its snout. These holes are pressure receptors and can be found in modern day crocodiles and alligators. This means that like crocodilians, Spinosaurus was able to detect the movement of animals in the water around it. This enabled Spinosaurus to strike with extreme accuracy. In 2019, a team of paleontologists unearthed what is now known as the most complete Spinosaurus skeleton ever found. The lead researcher that was studying the fossils was Nizar Ibrahim. There were many different bones discovered, but by far the most important was a nearly complete tail. The tail vertebrae were extremely special. They revealed that Spinosaurus had spines up to a meter long protruding from its tail, forming a long fin across the length of its tail. This meant that Spinosaurus is confirmed as the first swimming dinosaur. Its tail would have been used like a crocodile's to propel it through the water. It was previously thought that Spinosaurus hunted fish at the river's edge, but now we know Spinosaurus spent most of its time underwater hunting its prey. Ibrahim sent the design of the Spinosaurus tail to Harvard University, and they made plastic tails for Spinosaurus, crocodiles, newts, and other theropods. They measured the efficiency of each tail as it moved through the water and found that Spinosaurus's tail compared to modern day crocodiles and newts in effectiveness for propelling it through the water. In 2020, paleontologists unearthed approximately 600 Spinosaurus teeth from two different sites along the Kim Kim Riverbed in the Sahara Desert. This further confirms Spinosaurus as an aquatic dinosaur because land-dwelling dinosaur fossils account for only less than 1% of the fossils found at the site. That's because land-dwelling dinosaurs would have only come to the river to drink, but because there are so many Spinosaurus fossils found together, it means they would have spent almost all their time underwater and even died in the water. When Spinosaurus was first discovered in 1912, Strober envisioned it as a Tyrannosaurus rex with a sail on its back since the skeleton was far from complete. At the time, it was also believed that dinosaurs walked upright and dragged their tails on the ground. A while later, the connection was made that Spinosaurus belonged to the Spinosaurid family, along with Irritator Challengeri and Suchomimus tenorensis. Its head was reconstructed to look more like the other members of its family, with long crocodile-like jaws and conical teeth for piercing prey. The only difference was the crest on top of its head. After the first Spinosaur skeleton was destroyed in World War II, no more Spinosaurus fossils were found other than a couple of teeth. It wasn't until 2014 when the next partial skeleton was found. Scientists put together the bones of other Spinosaurids such as Ichthyovenator laucensis and Irritator with the Spinosaurus bones they found to create a computerized rendered image of a complete skeleton. This skeleton had shorter legs proportional to its body size than other Spinosaurids. It was proposed that Spinosaurus walked on its knuckles on land because it was too front heavy to stand only on its back legs. Then, it was suggested that Spinosaurus was semi-aquatic and hunted fish instead of dinosaurs. It may have had webbed toes to help it paddle in the water.
In 2020, with the discovery of a new skeleton, it was released to the public that Spinosaurus had an almost a completely aquatic lifestyle due to new tail vertebrae found. Spinosaurus fed on fish and terrestrial animals. It is thought to have been biased towards fishing, but would have also killed small to medium-sized prey and scavenged. Spinosaurus could attack humans on land or in the water. It would grab you using its massive claws and pull you into its crocodilian-like snout, then devour you. Or, it could simply snatch you up in its jaws as an easy kill. Spinosaurus takes first. Dakotaraptor moves to second, Seats to third, Thanos to fourth, Megalosaurus to fifth, and Moros to sixth. Spinosaurus wins this episode, moves on to our finalists. Next episode on 72 Dangerous Animals Prehistory, the Giant Southern Lizard, the Irritator, and the Fish Hunter. There are only 300 genera of dinosaurs, with only 90 being theropods. Since this season has 72 theropod dinosaurs, it includes almost all of them. It was incredibly hard to find the last few theropods to include, as many were only the size of a person or much smaller. In each episode, we will rank the creatures from 1 to 6 on a scale of how potentially dangerous these creatures would be to humans, and the winner of each episode will show down with the other 11 finalists in the season finale to decide on which prehistoric creature was the ultimate human killing machine.